What's up? I'm Triple Shoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick one, I'll be showing you something a bit different to the usual, a 3D printer slash modeling guide. If you're trying to print something, say, a model head or something that's a bit big and possibly confusing for your printer to print, especially with large overhangs and things like that. How exactly do you slice it, create joins, etc. Say we want to print a model of the head here. Some of these overhangs may be a bit difficult to print unless you have supports and things like that, but they can affect how the surface looks and you may need to sand it down afterwards. Or perhaps you don't want layer lines showing in a certain way. You can actually hide them if we were to say slice the model and piece them together afterwards using clips, dowels, or even a dovetail joint. That's what I'll be showing you how to do in this video here. Now, of course, you can do this with programs like Fusion 360, but we can do that straight inside of a 3D slicer being Prusa Slicer. Currently, it's not inside of Cura or anything like that. Simply firing up Prusa Slicer 2.7.1, the latest version, which you can download completely for free using the link in the description down below. Once you have it installed, you can use it for one of many printers. I personally have a Creality printer, so that's what I've selected here. The software isn't specific to Prusa printers only. Anyways, skipping over the simple info, let's actually import our model here. So I'll simply grab and drag the STL file in here. And now we can start splitting it up so it either fits better on our printer if we're not able to print it in one go, or if you'd like to piece it together afterwards and glue it back together. Let's say we want to print the front half of this face and the back half separately because maybe overhangs are too much, we don't like layer lines, or possibly things like supports are causing weird artifacts on the skin of your print. All you need to do is select whatever model you want to cut and click this button here, cut. It'll create a plane that we can simply rotate or move around using the ball here to drag it up and down, whatever axes it's set on, the red to tilt it along the X axis and the green to tilt it along the Y axis. You can hit Ctrl Z to undo any changes at any moment. Let's say print the front half of the head so I'll drag it to a reasonable angle and grab the ball to push it across like such. Now, if we were to maybe, I don't know, place it a bit better, we can print the front half of the head and the back half of the head separately. I'll quickly click the form cut and in just a few seconds, you'll see the first half is placed here, ready to be printed. Now, for some reason, there's a hole in this. I don't think that's related to this. I think that's just a mistake from the modeler. Usually, it'll be a perfectly flat plane along whatever you slice, allowing you to just print out the one piece, print out the other piece, and later on, glue them back together. But obviously, sticking to two flat planes together, such as maybe these two halves here, you'll need to align it pretty much perfectly in order to stick them back together. Let's add some dowels, clips, or a dovetail join. To do so, select the object, select cut. Then, once you've selected an angle and placed your plane to cut the object, simply click add connectors over here. Now you'll see part B, and if we move around, part A. It'll simply hide the one and show you the other, depending on where you angle it. I'm simply just left clicking anywhere and drag around to move the camera around our object. You can also zoom using the mouse wheel, hold in mouse wheel to move your camera, or you can right click to accomplish the same. Anyways, placing the camera in a reasonable spot, we can now click plug, down, or snap to get three different kinds of joins. Let's place one by simply clicking and you'll see a small join. In my case, this is way too small, so I'll undo with Ctrl Z and change the size over here to something a bit more reasonable, like maybe, I don't know, 30 millimeters, which is more reasonable for the object here, much better. If we simply place it, you'll see that a plug simply appears on whatever object we clicked, like such. If we move across to the other object, you'll see two equally sized holes that these plugs will stick perfectly into. So if I place one here, here, and here, for example, moving the camera, you'll see three holes on the top. And after printing one half and the other half, we can simply stick them together just with friction or possibly glue. But of course, plugs need to be printed on our object as such and are not removable. Instead, you can use dowel to create holes in both one object and the other object. And when we click confirm connectors and perform cut to see exactly what happens. Not only does it split our object, but when the program starts responding again, it'll also create dowels that fit perfectly inside of object B and object A. And starting the slice again, adding connectors once more, we have a third option, which is snap. If we select snap instead, we can click somewhere or rather make it a bit bigger first as such. And now you can see 
two parts of a plug that stick up that are angled sort of outwards and on the other half, two slots to connect it into. This way you can simply push two objects together and they'll essentially click into place, allowing you to more permanently hold two objects together. Obviously it'll need some flex in your material and you can adjust the bulge and space here to more appropriately fit your pieces together. If we were to head back to say plug, we can change the style. So if we click, it'll place instead of just a simple prism, a angled one so that they can more easily fit together in certain applications. We can even change the shape to a triangle, square, hexagon, and of course, circle. Doing so, you get a ton of different options to hold parts together. On top of this, if we click cancel or confirm, we can change from planar to dovetail. This creates a new object in a dovetail shape simply by slicing anywhere. Say here, you'll see that it creates object A with one part of the dovetail and object B with the other part of the dovetail, allowing them to slide together more seamlessly. Obviously, this has its perks and its downsides as well compared to down and things like that. It'll allow a more seamless fit, or at least I would think, with a lot more friction, meaning that things are less likely to fall apart. But of course, glue is always a good option as well. There are many options like the other ones, including width, flap angle, and groove angle, allowing us to adjust exactly how big or how wide the dovetail is in this case. Now, of course, there are many ways of cutting objects. This is probably just the simplest way of doing it inside of the slicer before you get to printing. For example, simply choosing an angle may Maybe printing the front of the head first as such. We can choose to make it a plane, add some connectors, say two maybe dowels such as this, allowing object A and B to connect using these two spots, holding them together more securely. If we confirm and perform the cut, just like that, we'll now be able to print in a different orientation for part one and part two, allowing us more fine control over what we're printing and how, especially if you're frustrated by prints failing constantly because of certain overhangs and things like that, you can instead remove them and print them in a separate orientation orientation if the rest of it prints a bit better in some other orientation. In my case, this is pretty much exactly what I tried to do and it worked pretty much perfectly. If you find that the dials are too tight, you can always sand them down afterwards or manually adjust them in the settings before the cut. On the far right here, you'll see all of the different parts, including part A and B, as well as the connectors at the very bottom. You can print specific ones or remove them from printing, etc, etc. It's a really powerful tool. Unfortunately, however, exporting this is difficult. If I select this object, choose File, Export, and Export Plate as STL slash OBJ, choose a place to save it, you'll see this error here. Unable to perform Boolean operation on model meshes, only positive parts will be exported. So these two holes here won't be included in our exported object. Of course, they'll be split in the way that we want, and the dowels should be there too. There just won't be holes, meaning we can't actually use it. Instead, if we undo and instead slice a dovetail, into it, we should see that file export STL. This time things actually succeed. So I'll open up a new window and once again drag in our object, this time the one that we split. And as you can see, besides an error about it being placed outside of our print area, the dovetail cut is still here and would work pretty much perfectly. This is a great way to interrupt large prints that either A won't fit on your printer or B are far too large to fail so you can slice them into multiple pieces and reattach them later on. Obviously, there's just a few things that you need to look out for, such as say, if we were to slice it somewhere near the top, for example, add connectors and place a really long dowel in the center of it or a plug, you'll see the issue here. It'll very easily go outside of the object that you're trying to slice. This is of course a very exaggerated example, but this is the kind of thing you need to look out for when you're doing this specific task. Something more realistic is maybe printing the front of the face separately from the back, adding connectors. And if you try and add plugs that are just a little bit too long, they'll stick out your object or more reasonably ever so slightly poke out the front, confirming and cutting, causing weird things like this to happen, or rather like this, where there's a hole that goes through it, but after slicing, there'll just be an empty hole there. Anyways, this has been a super simple crash course in cutting objects for 3D printing into more manageable pieces, different orientations, etc, creating mounting points such as dowels, plugs, etc, and even creating dovetail joints. Hopefully you found this video useful. For me, it definitely was learning about this feature. And I do hope 
other slices such as Cura and things like that eventually add this kind of feature because being able to create certain joins is definitely incredibly powerful, especially for long prints where a single failure could set you back a day or two. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Hopefully you found this video useful. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.